Recording has been started. <laughs> Thank. Unfortunately, we did not catch Hunter being sauce. What? Oh. <laughs> I will mute. I'm confused. All right. Uh. So, hello, people on the internet. Welcome back to uh, Pain Incarnate, otherwise known as Temple of Sorrows, where today we will be facing the first major boss. <coughs> Spoilers. Spoilers, the evil spot. Spoilers, yeah. Uh, so, a bit of a recap. Last session, our party... Uh, first of all, Hunter managed to half-scam Lucifer's father out of 100 gold, which honestly is literally pennies to Lucifer's father, to get himself a fedora and a trench coat and the mysterious stranger theme followed him around. Um, then they followed, well, Hunter really discovered, and then they all followed a bunch of clues, which led them first to a, uh, a, a, bit, of, a bit of a fight with a bunch of creatures and a half-dead fader lady that led to uh, Gilmir taking 1d4 back damage and then 1d4 scared lady damage. They followed another trail to a bunch of children in a drain pipe, which Kruger tried to hold, cast hold person on a child, and Lucifer threatened to kill the children? No. Yes, you did. I have listened to the recording. I never threatened to kill them. Yes, you did. You said, or we could just kill you. I don't think I said that. In you there. did listen to the podcast. Um, and then the children... Along with Cade and Krukagith, were teleported away to Mark said way by a strange wraith guy that fell from the sky. Um, they had a bit of a conversation with a high priestess of Arilla, and then went back to Stronghold. They then proceeded to the Second Ring, to an abandoned church of Vagus and Rehan, where they found some defaced statues and a guy called Oduthiok the Brand, who almost killed, uh, well, pretty much... Oh, but yeah, he almost killed uh, Asp. He survived, though, because resurrection. Odufiak bargained did, with the party. He did technically die, son. He did technically die. Um, Odufiak bargained with the party, saying he would trade his life for the exact position of Kaidok. And now, we our, our, our scene opens, fading from black into, and into the scene. Of a dark and well, a, a dark um, day. There are thunderheads on the horizon. Clouds are coming in. It appears a violent storm is brewing, and all of you are standing outside of the abandoned governor's palace. Well, uh, it's the you know that Kaidok is inside, and the floor is now yours. We didn't get a long rest, did we? You did. We did. Oh, oh. motherfucker's gonna throw us at the fuck at the fight before we can get a long rest. No, I was like, I'm pretty I was sure all say, of us were below half rats. Help. I had eight rats, man. I had eight rats. Yes, I was on one rat. rat. I'm glad for the long rest. <laughs> Damn, dude. I send you yeah. in to fight the hardest <laughs> thing so far with eight rats. <laughs> Dude could literally all, breathe on us and we'd die. Yeah, yeah. So, all uh, combined, we have like 50 rats. <laughs> pretty yep. much. But at least like, we're higher yeah. level now. Yeah, yeah, yeah seventh yeah, level. level now. Was uh, it worth trading the life of a friend? I think so. Seventh Absolutely. level. Well, the life of whoever dies first, anyway. Which, uh, shit, forgot about that. Oh, actually. Okay. Before you, I'm, I'm just going to assume that you kind of enter, uh, Lucifer, would you make me a... Uh, yeah. uh, one thing I do want to say, okay. um, in a, uh, for us, because I never said it in character yet, and I need to, uh, by the way, he's called Kitan, 
Anyway, go on. <laughs> <laughs> Finally! <laughs> Lucifer, could you make me a perception? Okay, my perception is shit, you know this. Does he get... Could he get uh, a help action? No. Oh, good, because I wasn't going to give it to him. <laughs> Eight. Eight? Uh, that's... So, you remember back whenever your sword first awakened, I said that it would speak to you sometimes, correct? Yeah, like it would whisper. You hear a voice in your head. Would you, would you like to try and focus on it? Yeah. Alright, so the voice is calling to you by name. Uh, what it kind of says is, Lucifer. you hear me? Oh, uh, what the fuck? Yeah? I am that which your ancestors destroyed. Oh. I am he who my dog seeks to avenge. And who's that? I am Algamon. You're in my sword. Correct. No! I... Go ahead. Know this. My descendant only seeks to avenge me. And to reclaim what he believes is his. That being this sword. No, uh, <clears throat> he will not allow you to escape with your life. Know this. I have to kill him. If you defeat him, he will consider his revenge successful. And he will not bother you again. Sounds like my best option. All he seeks is reparation for the murder of myself and his grandfather and his father and his mother. And the sword falls silent. Okay. Is Lucifer just talking to himself out loud this whole time? Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Are well, you... While looking at a sword a little bit. Are you saying your prayers before we go into this fight? Uh... Yeah, uh... Praise me, oh god, our holy savior. Let me kill this man. Ah, uh, you gain 1d8 inspiration. Oh, sick. Huh. Um, guys, just before I go in here out of character, should I death ward someone or should I save the banishment? Toward our um, big boy, um, Mr. Asp, please. What does banishment do again? <laughs> I know it banishes them, but like, where? It, it banishes him to his native plane. If I keep my concentration up for a minute, he just doesn't come back. You might want to keep that for the wraith if one of us dies, though. Oh, yeah. You know what? Yeah, true. I, I like oh, how you think. Yeah. <laughs> but if you die, then we're screwed anyways. We're fucked, yeah. <laughs> so, the water will win. Would you like, would you like oh. to go into this big place? Uh, actually, don't go is... first. Mm -hmm. Go, go ahead. Uh, so, Gilmer's gonna step forward and just... Both hands open up the doors to the, to the, uh, what is it, like the, the it's governor's a, house? The it's a it's the old governor's palace. Oh, governor, old governor. Okay. So it it no longer has anybody in it in it, but uh, I swing the doors open. So it it's a it is basically the standard mansion that you'd see in any um. And any movie, it's a large foyer, I believe it's called, with two staircases that come down either side, curving up. 
Uh, between each staircase is a large double door, which is open, and it leads into a massive hall with a window at the far end and what looks like an altar. Uh, and there is a figure standing right in front of the altar, its back turned to you. Never mind, I was going to ask if I see any burned flesh on the floor, but there he is. <laughs> uh, can I roll perception to get a good look on the guy? Is he, Does he have four arms, you know? Uh, yeah, you can, you can roll me, All like Kydog, you can roll me perception. Cool. That's an eight. <laughs> so, it doesn't look like the Kydog you know. Hmm. I'm going to not trust myself. I'm going to draw my blade and slowly walk forward. I don't know if you want to do following? That Are you guys following me, or are you just gonna let me yeah. go? On myself? <laughs> I'm gonna go behind you. Actually, um, first thing, I want to cut my arm for two minutes. Okay, that is ten hit points. Right. So, you all just enter walk. this abandoned hall. It looks like it might have been a dining hall or at some point. Maybe a place the governor would throw parties for people. You know that the old governor was actually really, really fond of just the common citizenship and would often hold balls and celebrations where anyone really could just come in. Uh, but you, you enter this large area and the figure standing with its back to you, it's not one that you really recognize. It looks like a six armed tiefling with with like charcoal gray skin four horns and long kind of shaggy black hair and i will let me duplicate this quick and then remove his full name um i will drop this in general what you see is is kind of what i described is that and the figure kind of Speaks quietly. Have you ever lost someone you love, Lucifer? I'm holding tightly onto my blade as I'm standing in front of Lucifer. <laughs> I mean, yes, I have. Surely, then, you must know how it feels to be powerless, helpless as what you love is taken from you. He bows his head. Many would say that true demons, or even half-demons such as myself, lack the ability to feel love is untrue. Demons are as any other creature. We feel love, pain, happiness, sadness. But we might experience them in a different, more pure way. He shifts kind of side to side. You and I are far more alike than you realize. He pauses for a moment, then stretches all of his all six of his hands out. True, demons often become evil as time passes. Millennia does that to you. And often demons enjoy wrecking havoc and violence as angels find joy in spreading peace and tranquility. Two sides of the same coin, now. An interesting example of this duality. Many demons walk in the ranks of Vax, the elder god of war. So, um, what you, can as you all can assume is Kaidok turns. You see hanging from a well-worn leather belt several scalps hanging from it. In the dim light you cannot make them all out. He steps out of the shadows. His burning eyes meaning all of yours, his six arms relaxed. The scalps hanging from his waist are a few random guards and hunters, and then Tumika and Jik. A shorn-off bunch of Ager's hair is visible hanging among the scalps. My father was taken from me, for merely inheriting the blood of Algamoth. My mother, killed before my own eyes for mating with the demon of Algamoth's blood, by her own father no less. Following the path of poetic justice, I've come here. I've taken what you loved. He steps to the side and gestures to his still form on the altar. Ager lays on the altar, his arms crossed across his chest, his eyes closed, hair shorn off, completely still. And now I challenge you, and all you who f and all who follow you, the brave souls they have proven themselves to be, to face me. As he speaks, a shimmer like charcoal set aflame rushes over his skin. It begins to burn away, and the top two of his arms are consumed in a flash of white flame. His hair, skin, horns, and eyes all burn away, revealing the four-armed, three-headed creature of bone and muscle you know him as. He stares at you and speaks. Let us begin. I would like all of you to roll me initiative. 
Oh, let's go. All right, all right, all right. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be real with you. After that, the the feeling of death has not been more imminent. I am terrified. <laughs> uh, I got Yeah, no, that was fucking terrifying. I got a yeah. six. I got an eight. I got a twenty. <laughs> oh, no. oh, oh my god, yes. Uh, okay, so let 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 me get this straight. Marillo, you got a twenty. Yes. Zal. Uh, twelve. Twelve. Grim. Eight. Eight. Tibby? I got a six. Six, uh, Hunter? Oh, no. Fourteen. Fourteen. Alright. We right. sort out our position, by the way, before, before the, we... the fight starts. I am standing in front of, uh, Tibby. Uh, trying to, you know... Alright, let me, let me, uh, really quick put the order down for you. Scared in order is, this time? Can I see if Edgar's chest is, um, breathing? Is he breathing? He is, he is completely still. Okay, he's on so. fire. Oh, fuck, he... oh, well, on fire. If he's dead, oh well. You just just give your parents another eight months, nine months. Oh. <laughs> Hunter. So, Hunter, Hunter, I assume is like way on the back. Yeah, right, dude. I am. So... I am way in the back. This uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask. drop initiative in bot rolls. That is the order. Oh no. <laughs> Yeah, no, dude. Did you not expect him to get the highest initiative when he can move like 30 miles in one second? Uh, just, I know. Just, yeah. uh, just, uh, uh, to, to refresh on what Kaidok looks like, Kaidok in his, his demon form looks like that. A kind of three-skulled, four-armed figure, really oddly muscled, really just bone and marble white flesh. Lovely. A moment of a blue tinge. Yeah. Here and there. Um, kind of Beer. smoke rising off of him. Alright, so I believe it is my turn first. And <laughs> what my turn. he is going... What uh, Kaidok is going to do is... Oh boy, what do I want to do here? Uh, Kaidok is going to first move uh who okay so i believe tibetan you're in front correct no gilmir uh, is gilmir is in front uh marilla where are you being a general is approximation of the position i'm standing to the side of lucifer behind gilmer all right hmm. the fact uh, that he's not asking anyone else where where we're standing is concerning <laughs> uh, Hunter just never hit by any AOE ever. He's just way back. All right. So yeah, dude, I am like I am far behind. Kaidok is going to move up a short distance. This this uh hall is about ninety by thirty feet. Uh, you all are at the end of it. At one end of it, he's at the other end. He is going to move up about seventy five feet. Uh, so he's 15 feet away from Krukagith, and he is going to use Tongue of Flame. Uh, Krukagith, I'm assuming a 22 hits you. Just barely, oh. yeah. Alright. Uh, so, he... Does one of the, you know, one of those, like, karate things where his fists are at, his bottom two fists are at his sides, and then one of them shoots out his palm out first and a just this really a tongue of just white fire blasts out towards you oh, shit. uh you take damage. eight fire damage he is going to use one of his charges of hail of blows ah uh, monk <laughs> yep that was what i was thinking yeah all right Question: If I roll multiple dice, will Avray roll the mod? Will Av Avray add the modifier to all of them? No. no. Got to do it manually. Plus two, you gotta do plus four if it's two two hits. Okay. Uh. Well, I'll just so I'll roll these and then add the modifier manually to them. Oh no. Oh good lord. Uh, Marilla, <laughs> what's what, what's you. your AC? 
Well, you see, he is a 17. All right, so three of these are going to hit you normally. Uh, any not 20 is about there. Two. Uh, uh, no, not at all. All right. Uh, what is this? Grave cleric, bitch. I negate crits. Oh, is that so? Shit, wait, actually? Let's go! Uh, oh, <laughs> fuck. <laughs> Against just you or everyone? Uh, as a reaction, when you are an ally that you can see within 30 feet of so his critical hit, you can turn that into a normal hit. How so you can many only times... negate one of the crits. That's still pretty fucking good. That's still yeah. really good. Alright, so initially you take 33 fire damage as he- as three of these hit you, and then I'm gonna roll one of the crits normally. Uh, you take 16 damage from the crit that you negate. And then you take You're just dead. Fourteen fire damage from the crit that you do not negate. Ah, oh, this oh, is oh, a oh. I'm down by the way. No way. <laughs> what the Wait. fuck? <laughs> I just, is, are you reduced to zero rats? I'm sorry. I just took sixty-seven damage in one turn. Holy like, oh, fuck! Just, are you, are you like? Not about the prize, dead, but dead, geez. Right? He comes when he's dead, dead. Not when he's knocked down, right? He's down. Yeah, just. Heal me. Um, who, <laughs> Help me! Uh, so, <laughs> comes when he's dead, dead. Not when he's knocked down, right? Uh, Kaidok is now going to move back 15 feet and uh, beckon for someone to come at him. <clears throat> uh, fuck. Oh. <laughs> Oh, Jesus Christ! Guys, we're not gonna make it out of this alive! That was never in the question that we were gonna do that. Okay. Mm. I mean, it's Marilla's turn next, so... Death save! Uh, yeah, make, make your first death save, Marilla. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Are you within five feet of me? I uh, 10 feet, sorry. I am within 10 feet, yeah. Like, yeah, you have a plus 5 on that? Okay. So, there's... There's a real low chance I failed this. A 25% yeah. chance. We... <sighs> so, do I send this to you, Armand? Ah, uh, yes. Mm, okay. I just I delete the old ones that. then. Or not, then easy. Alright. Here. Nice. Fuck, is, is Marilla gonna be the first one to die in this game, like how he was the first one to die in Avernus? <laughs> uh, Alright, uh, next, next, next player's turn. Hunter. Hunter, oh, it's your turn. fuck me. Dude, I don't even- now I'm terrified! I don't even want to shoot this guy! Oh! <laughs> fuck, you know what? You know what? I'm not gonna shoot him. I'm not gonna shoot him. Uh, bonus action. <clears throat> this is the first time anyone see him do anything like this. Uh, a, kind of like a metallic mist kind of comes off of his hand and starts moving towards um, Kaidok as I cast Hexblade's Curse on him. Can I make a save against that? No. Okay. Uh, you can make a save against this as my action I am going to cast Mind Sliver. He needs to make an intelligent saving throw. An intelligent saving throw. Of all the things. I am making use of that Warlock. Uh, that's ASAP. an 8. Alright, so he takes 1d6 psychic damage. 6 psychic damage. Cool. Uh, and next time he needs to make a saving throw before the end of... Wait. Before the end of my next turn, next time he needs to make a saving throw, he needs to subtract 1d4 from it. Okay, cool. And that is my action. Nice. Next turn. Which yeah, is... yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it's good old me. Yeah, it's you. Uh, <laughs> Gelmir has been through shit, so I may be scared. Gelmir will not show fear. <laughs> he, uh, so Gelmir is going to grab tightly onto his uh, great sword. He's going to charge at Kaidok and just scream, Bastard! And I'm going to swing twice. <laughs> 
All right. Roll a hit. Fuck, that is a nine? That, that does not, not hit. hit, no. <laughs> God, we're so fucked. That's that 20, baby. Uh, oh, that, that hits. Yeah. Yeah. No. Isn't, there, isn't there a really cool thing you can do with crits as an executioner? Let me check. Oh, also, isn't our thing really wrong? I know executioners have some really cool shit, I'm but I don't know what this is. I'm pretty sure I edited it. I edited it. So on a crit, you do. Can you stun on a crit? Uh, I'm reading the doc right now. I don't think. Well, that D100, baby. Uh, roll damage for now. Can roll damage. Oh, Wait, roll a D100. Me. Please tell me you can stun him until like your next turn or something. So that is, uh, 21, so I do, that is, that is, th I think, 3 damage above my maximum, it is. Okay. So the creature is stunned until it succeeds a DC, uh, 14 constitution save. DC throw. 14 con save. Alright, I do oh, need you to roll me. me a... But it can only do that at the end of its turn. I... Do need you to roll me a d100 right whenever I, I'm gonna roll this con save. Okay, I'm gonna roll that d100. Oh, oh wait, 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 so no, it's, no, it just is stunned until the next until it's the end of its next turn. Oh wow, well, I I fail anyway, but I'm gonna use a right legend. Oh oh wait, it is an automatic stun, isn't it? If I fail it to is. save, auto stuns him until the end of his next turn, yes, or the end of your next turn. End of his next turn. Okay, cool. Oh, yeah, I'm can... I'm stunned. No, no, he can make the save at the end of his next turn. Okay. Oh, and if he, oh, so he could just we'll theoretically done. just stay stunned forever. Seventy-five. I got a seventy-five. A seventy-five. All right, Tibby, I like how you're getting excited here. I'm uh, not excited. I'm fucking freaking out. So Kaidok is knocked prone. Oh, so he's and stunned I... and prone. Is... So I'm going to uh, I yeah. swing upward like like a cleaving upward, right? Okay. He dodges it. Uh, that was my, you know, my nine. Mm -hmm. And then I bring down the hammer. <laughs> Great situation. Slam him onto the ground. And now I'm. Uh, that was twenty-one damage, by the way. Twenty-one. All right. Twenty-one. And then I'm going to. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and Mariah or uh, the dancing blade. Yeah. Can't you guillotine when he's knocked prone? Wait. Isn't that wait? Is that a thing you have? Uh yeah. <laughs> Uh, no, if, actually, if he's but... stunned or prone, you can uh, use an execution charge. The but thing is, if you Ooh! what do I have another attack that you do so? Okay, I'm gonna add a d10 to my uh, my attack then as well. Yeah. Wait, oh. I believe you're level seven, so I'm pretty sure it's two d10. Three times for one. Two d10 it is. Do it then. Let's see. Uh, wait, do you roll those damage dice twice because it's a crit or no? Would I? Uh. I no, they just stack on top of regular damage. Okay, so that's 21 plus 12. All right. Not bad. Not I bad, not bad. off my shirt when you said that. And now I am going to Dancing Blade, which is going to uh, require him to make a DC... Yes. I am Dexter. stunned and pro. Yeah, that's stunned. They also fail. Oh, oh, hot. That's, that's hot. Anyway. <laughs> Oh. Gonna roll also, my they're prone, which means they would also fail too. <laughs> Let's fucking go! Max damage, baby! How in the fuck? Oh, oh, oh. I'm getting a wreck! 24 damage. I slam him onto the ground. I'm gonna step on his, like, on his, like, stomach. The blade is spinning, and I'm gonna bring it down on his chest. Oh. You're gonna do the fatality here. I'm just gonna, gonna popping off. I'm just gonna be like berserk guts screaming my head off at this point. <laughs> You're the berserk. I'm just working. Is that? Yeah. That's my turn. That's is, my turn. is that your turn? Okay. Uh, Grim. I. <laughs> yep. Yeah. I would kiss uh, Your turn. Yeah, it is my turn. You're right. Uh, Why not get stunned and prone? He's just having a seizure. Lower his AC! Lower his AC! Yeah, I, I was- I was thinking that <laughs> might be the <laughs> worst you. idea. Fucking um, do it. But I'm gonna do something even better on top of that. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is first, I'm gonna ignite my growth augmentation. Ooh. 
which Ooh, does nice. cost, which does admittedly cost five HP, but it's worth it. I then walk over to them, or more aptly run over to them, and uh, with my currently ignited um, tendrils, slam that straight into them to cast Shattering Strike at <gasps> an upgraded <gasps> level. <sighs> So, uh, oh. yeah, that's gonna be, gonna be, um... Oh, I get advantage, don't I, because they're prone. You do. Yeah, and you stun. Do. Yep. Stun. <laughs> okay, uh, ba -ba -ba. Yeah, that's a 25. Oh, good forward. <laughs> that hits. Does that hit? That, hits? that okay, absolutely good. hits. Yeah, good. Uh, so now we do... We do a minute, minute amount of trolling. We do a minute amount of trolling. Uh, that's right. So that's twenty damage, and their AC is reduced by five. Oh, that's hot! Fucking <laughs> lord! Oh. All right, I still have a decent AC. I'm fine. Oh. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, guys, yeah. I'm assuming dex based. So like, fuck. Well, no, yeah, but it's. That's fine. Uh, yeah, so that's uh, actually extra pill. Now that I think about it, uh, growth augmentation. I might get to do something else as well. Uh, bu -bu 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 -bu. Uh, Yeah, okay now. That's that's me for now. And since they're stunned and prone, I will uh move away. <laughs> okay. Luck, you better know. Uh Tibby. Um hey man. How far away is he? Uh he's currently like fifteen feet away. Right. Walk up to the guy. Okay. I cast branding smite. Alright, my sword glows with the radiance, and I go to hit him. Yeah. You got this. <laughs> I have, uh, what, what plus do I have? I have plus two, right? Because I did two minutes. That's correct. Alright, so that's... Fuck <laughs> me! What's that? Um, Out. can I, I can add my inspiration to that, right? You could. If you want to, yeah. I mean, you wouldn't have to, technically. Does that hit? hit? That would hit, but here's a bit of a thing. So the sword you're carrying has mm. the soul of Algamoth within it. Mm -hmm. You are trying to hit a descendant of Algamoth with Algamoth. Take a minus five penalty to any attacks on Kaidok. Mm. Uh oh. <laughs> okay. Hey. Um. Uh -oh. That spear would be really nice, man. I'll go pick up the fucking spear then. So that's an eight. That's a ten. You can you can still roll that. That does not that's hit. 12. Oh. Okay. Um. I think I I can because it's concentration. All right. So fuck that. How far away is Krokuth? Uh. Fifteen feet away. Fuck me. <clears throat> so that's not going to work, and I don't think I have another weapon that is a sword. Just wait till next round, my guy. <laughs> yeah. Um, I wasted my bonus action and my, and my attack action. So I'm gonna just go over to Kurokugith, drop my sword, and pick up her flaming spear. Alright, uh, back to the top of the order, which is our dear friend Kaidok. So. Because he, make it he is stunned. <laughs> Question is, did the save that you rolled earlier count towards this round oh, saving throw? Okay, so yeah, that, did it, did that's, it, a, that's a 16. It, it should. Good should. lord, that's I a I think 16. it should. So, uh, I think he saves. Fuck, dude, I just wanted to have a turn where I could have advantage and go all out, but no. Uh, he's gonna use... What, what is it, half of his movement? get up oh yes, yep. it is half 
All right, so does that scale? Yes, yes. yes. it's half of his movement. Okay, so he's going to use 45 feet of movement to get up. What the fuck? Then use the oh. other 45 feet to run away. Triggering how many? Attack, uh, bro? Triggering yes. two, I think. No, Asp, did you nope. move away? I moved away. Uh, triggering one from Gilmir. I'm just yeah, going to be it. screaming, Nidok! Stun uh, him again, bitch. Okay, does a modified 20 hit? That does indeed hit. <laughs> Come on, baby. Kiwi. Come on. Come on. Oh, fuck yeah, baby. Oh, fuck yeah. Oh, above, fuck yeah, baby. Above max damage. Let's go! Ah! Let's go. Or above half damage, I mean. Above half? Uh, it's... Wait, I thought it was above half. Was it that that, that half? is for strike. That is an action you can use. Uh, shackle oh, is within five. That's a passive. Wait, what? Let me see. Okay, strike is the action oh, you yeah. can use. You have to call out specifically before you attack that you're going to use strike. Okay, then I'm, I'm just using shackle then. So, so let me see here. So that is, uh... Fuck me. That's 11 plus four. That's... I think that's literally just my max right there, yeah. Uh That's 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 one before that's one below my max. Would that still shackle or No? Uh I don't think so. I don't know. Um Fifteen one shackle? Fifteen. I know. No, no alright. Oh uh, still takes fifteen damage though. Dude, all right. Yeah, yeah I, I, this is fine. Yeah, this, this is fine. All right, so uh, he he moves away. It is the end of his turn, so he's lost all of his actions. But I don't care because he's going to use a free action to start doing some side steps. Um. Uh, he, Serious side steps. So he he like kind of blurs for a second, and then yes. to each side of him forms a mirror as he oh, uses free action? both of his uh, charges of double image to create two double images. He still has a bonus action. Wouldn't that be a bonus action instead? Oh, wait. Does he have a bonus action? Yeah, he then that, yeah, that would else. be a bonus action. Yeah, motherfucker, that should mm. never be a free action. You know what I get to do on my free action? <laughs> I get to say, hey, fuck you. That's it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> In the interest of combat balance. <laughs> yes, yeah. Uh, um, Alright, so these double images uh, have one-fourth of Kaidox hit points, respectively. And they go right after him. So that would mean they rolled a... They would have a 24. And a 23, respectively. All right, so double one is going to move up towards uh, Gilmir. Uh oh, uh, it is going to make some make some attacks. All right, so I rolled a twenty-one, a sixteen, a twenty-three, and an eight. Everything above the 20 hits. I have an AC of 18. <laughs> All right, so the 21 and the 23 hit, so that would be... Uh, we're going to take average on this, so then that would be... You take 32 bludgeoning. Uh, he is going to use... I'm imagining every, every, like, every swing he does, I'm trying to block her. He's going he's going to use a charge of something here. Mm -hmm. I need you to make a con save. Oh, fuck. All right. All right. Come on, baby. Please be nice to me, D20. Uh, okay, so that is a what's it uh that's um 18. That saves. Oh, oh thank god. Congratulations. <laughs> fuck. Uh, the second double is going to use an action to 
flame dash towards Asp. Uh, all right, so Asp, you're in the back, correct? Yes. So it's going to be moving past both uh, Gilmir and Tibetan then. I need both of you to make me a dexterity saving throw. Oh fuck, that's the thing I'm bad at. Um, Gilmir, are you within 10 feet of me? No, I don't think so. Right. You're back at Marillo, I'm actively where, uh, where Kydark was. Kicking his shit in. So that's a 9? <laughs> uh, you fail. Dibby? Mm -hmm. 15. You just save. So... Six. Wait, 15? Oh wait, no, you fail. Sorry. Fuck. I was reading the wrong number. Uh, it's DC 16. So both of you take 15 fire damage and are knocked prone as this creature combusts... It, it just combusts in a burst of flame and blows past you just so like a 15. bolt of fire. 15 uh, fire damage. Rats, guys. Guys, Can we round rats. up or round down for damage? Uh, round up. Round up. Okay, so that's 16, 15, right? 15 damage? It's a, how much exactly damage are we taking? Well, that's fire damage, Tibby, so you you Eight, take three. half that. Yeah. Um, Asp, it appears in front of you, and it's going to use its action to attack you. Right. Uh. uh. This motherfucker got the mobile feet. All right, so I rolled a 25, a natural 20, and two 15s. The fuck dice are you using? Oh, wait, wait, so two 15s? The two 15s miss. All right, I will roll the... I'll do the damage for the 25 first, which is... Uh, huh? No, nothing, I'm just saying goodbye to ass. Oh, uh, that's a 16 bludgeoning damage. I'm just using average because I was told by Owen I could use average for damage, and this average is damage automatically for monsters. So you take 16 bludgeoning damage from the first attack, and then it reels back and hits you with all four of its arms, and you take 32 more bludgeoning damage. <laughs> 32, you said. Uh, that's 16 damage. times 2. I'm still alive. <laughs> oh, yeah, you are. Um, Staying alive. Staying alive. Staying alive. All right, it is now Marillo's turn. Hey. You have a plus five, baby. <laughs> to oh, to make one. death save what? two. You have a plus five to your death save. Number two, let's go. So technically, you cannot roll an after one. Okay, I have done it. Okay. Bet. Almost like I don't try. It is now. Hunter. This music falls. Your turn. All right, I'm gonna go for Mr. Kaidok in the back. The, in the original. Back. The original. Okay, cool. The OG. The OG. <laughs> um. Yeah. Uh. Actually, before I shoot him, I'm gonna bonus action. Cast Hex. Uh, there's no save. I just deal extra damage to him. Uh, okay. Uh, so I'm gonna attack him. Just you have Hex Blades Curse and, and Hex on him. Yeah. yeah. So if only he was stunned still, I would have fucking destroyed him. I can't control that man. Man just got up. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you should just be better! Come on! Fuck you! Fuck you! <laughs> um, does a 19 hit? Uh, 19... Is his AC still lowered? Yeah, uh... It's, it, uh let me check exactly. Uh, Shattering Strike. Uh, it, it's reduced... It's just reduced. Uh, until the end of the ne target's next turn. Which was my last turn. So yes. Uh, then a then nine. It's, it's no longer reduced. Then a nineteen does not hit. Okay, well I'll use precision then. Okay. A twenty-three. That hits. Make a strength save. Make a strength save. Okay. <sighs> Asking Kai Doc to make a strength save, bruh. That's a thirteen. 
It fails. I'm going to use really? a legendary resistance. You son of a fucking bitch! I succeed. I'm going to use a reaction to deflect missile. Mm. I need you to make okay. your damage roll because you do still hit. All right. Uh, all right. So this is with normal pistol. How much is that damage? So that would be eight plus five, which we're sorry, uh, three plus five, which is eight. But then also plus another D8 or plus four. So that would be 12. Then because of Hexblade's curse. Plus three. So that's 15. And then because of Hex plus another D6. Ah! Wow. 20. 20? Okay. Like a paladin that's been 20. Uh, I deflect 13 of that. Okay, so he still takes seven damage. I do stake seven damage. All right. Flaming uh, Extra attack. Sure, we could do it Seventeen plus eight. That one. That one should hit. Twenty. Five. Twenty-five to hit. Yeah. That hits. Make a strength save. Make a strength save. Dude, I am not gonna let this motherfucker. I swear to God. I will give you a chance. <laughs> That's 25. Motherfucker, oh, dude. I just want to do something. Alright. Um, oh my fucking god. I'm going to cry. 9, 14, 17, 24, 26 damage. That's a lot of damage. I just want him to be fucking stunned. Someone, please fucking, please stun him. I, well, I'm kind of occupied with this or double. Right someone, now. give me advantage, because if you can give me advantage, I will blow everything. I Seeking literally bullets, can. I don't know how far away he is. From everything. Me. I will blow everything on this. All right. Uh, Zal, he's currently thirty feet away. Oh. Actually, wait. No, he moved. He moved back. Thirty. He moved back forty-five feet. So forty-five feet away. Yeah, and the mo and the fucking the devil's in front of me anywhere. Yeah, uh, Zal, it is your turn. Mm-hmm. Kaida, double number one is in front of you. What round is it? I believe this is round three? This, this is round, round two still. Okay. Cool. Uh, Imagine dying in six seconds. <laughs> you. What can I say? Except you're welcome. Alright. <laughs> Uh, so I am, I'm going to like, it completely, like, I'm going to swing at the guy in front of me, the double. Okay. But I'm not breaking eye contact with Kaidok. <laughs> so he, I'm going to swing at the double. He's not breaking eye contact with you. He's mad at you. Uh, fuck yeah, nat 20. All right. Oh, oh yeah, baby. you I'm make me you. so horny. Tibby, you literally act gay. Stop. More gay than me. Well, I'm the gay on the first one. 12 damage on the first one. 12 damage. So I'm really shit. 12. All right. Uh, double one is going to use re is going to use his reaction to power through pain. Man. <laughs> At least it doesn't have any reaction now. You can you can leave his attack range, and go for the original. You won't be attacked. But he's too far away. <laughs> oh shit! I thought he was. 40, I don't have 40 oh wait, you don't have 45 movements. Yeah. I don't. <laughs> Anyway, uh, I'm, I guess I'm gonna swing at him again. Shit. Nope, that doesn't hit. That's a, that's a two. Yeah, that does not plus, hit. Uh, plus four, so that, no, it doesn't hit. And now I'm gonna, uh, no, I'm not gonna waste my last sing, dancing blade on him. That's, uh, that's my turn. Alright, uh, it is now Grim. Turn. Alright. You've cool, got so a I've double got... in front of you. Yeah. Cool. Um, let's think. Okay. Just kill the fucker. <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking about the best way to go about that. Um, Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna actually attack, which I rarely get to do. Uh, so yeah. Uh, bu -bu -bu -bu. 
So that's one. Ooh. Okay, so that's an eight, a twenty-five, and a twenty-six, which is a nat twenty. A tw uh, okay, the twenty-five and twenty-six hit. All right, cool. Uh, so it's gonna be five from the first attack, All right. bludgeoning. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm going. I'm gonna use a charge of my warhammer on this crit here. Ah, uh, yes, the warhammer of Rakar the Insurmountable. Mm -hmm. I didn't even know he had a warhammer. Yeah, he has one side of his tentacle. Yep. Oh. Which, uh, actually, Tibby, you remember your special shield's name? Yeah. Car. Does the does the thunder damage get doubled as well? Uh. Do I do sure. Roll, do I do double dice? Okay, cool. Shield of Brakar, the intermountain. Okay, so that's uh. I mean, that's twenty-seven damage total from that attack. All right. And they have to make a strength saving throw to so, be prone. So, really quick, as its reaction, it is going to power through pain. Okay. Can I already do that? Or is no, this is a different one. A different uh, one. Now I'm going to make my strength saving throw. It's, yeah, it's uh, DC 15. Oh, wow, a six. Yeah, it's prone. Yay. Wait, I can legendary resistance that. Haha! -ha. Damn it! <laughs> copies can do that too. Oh yeah, the copies have all of his features. Motherfucker! It's basically just mirror image. He just makes a copy of himself. The mirror image can't attack. Oh, mirror image does. That's fucking bullshit. Yeah. <sighs> the mirror image just makes it so you're harder to be hit. <sighs> Oh wait, I just realized- I apologize for nothing. Yeah, I just realized something with that 8. Uh, I'm gonna roll a hit die real quick. Ugh. Yeah, that's a- that's actually a 20 to hit, never mind. <laughs> 20 does indeed hit. Yeah, okay. Warhammer, here we go. That's 8 additional damage. Alright. Okay, cool. It is Tibby. It's your turn. Um. All right. I oh, use. Yeah, and I am going to unignite because I'm not killing myself anymore. <laughs> I use one hit point of out of my healing pool to bring a baby girl up. She is literally taller than you. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Wait, what? I brought her up. I use my hands. Oh shit. Oh, oh, okay. You're up, buddy. Can I heal her further now? Yeah. You can heal up to well, however many you Actually, have. I don't know. You can literally empty the entire pool into one person. You can burst. empty the entire pool yeah. if you want. I don't want to empty the entire pool, because what if one of you other fuckers goes down? I'm yeah. looking at you, ass. Okay, look, um, uh, Timbuton, you are forgetting that I am a Grave Cleric. If anyone goes down and I heal them, I roll just max on my dice to heal them. Oh yeah, um, I'm gonna heal you 30 hit points now. Keep like one hit point in case I go down again or something. Y you now have 31 hit points since okay. since I brought them up once since I brought them up and then I healed them further after they were brought up. Okay. Now they have 31 hit points. Really You're good, bro. I'm about half health. Thank you. All right. Um, I'm glad you lost I'm your full finished. health in one attack, so it'll <laughs> only take half attack uh, an attack to put you down. Healing uh, hands um, is a uh, is an action. True. There's an action. Okay, that does not matter, I, I think. Yeah, you're paladin, sure you does. cast bonus action light. This is an action. I don't know. I do, actually. I use my shield and gain a d4. Roll 1d4 to my AC. Ah, that's delicious. I am nice. Red. Okay, and then I will use. Um, since that ended, because I failed my con, con save, um, you are definitely within 30 feet of me, right, uh, Gilmere? Mm-hmm. 
You're within 60 feet. All right, I cast Shield of Faith on you, motherfucker. You now have a plus two to your AC. 20 AC, let's go. Yeah. Thank me later, and that is my turn. Oh, wait, can I just do that? Nine? Because that's a free action, so I might have to... I might, I might be able to do something here. No, I cannot. Um, I will move 30 feet towards my... Um... Actually, I'll... I'll give you guys advantage on one of the... Um, the doubles. Uh, never mind, I can't. Alright, just keep, just, just continue, I can't do that. Okay. So... Um, Reset. Bobby. Reset. So, Tibby, are you, were you moving up? Um... He's next to... Oh, wait, never mind. I wanted to, but then I realized that there are doubles, so I guess I'm not going to. You can, uh, Kydok is going to use an action to use Infernal Spirit. <clears throat> so... And he regains 28 hit points. <gasps> this mother You did not just make the enemy heal. I did. And he is going to uh, cross his arms. His top two oh, arms. And just kind of look out. Uh, okay, so double number one is going to turn away. Well, it's going to uh, move past Gilmere. Doesn't really care oh. about opportunity of attacks right now. Can I? Yeah. It's going to move the. Uh, wait. How far is Krokogif from Gilmere? Uh, fifteen feet, I believe. Uh, yeah, fifteen feet. Yeah. All right. So it, it's going to move. It's going to move away out of Gilmere's attack range. Twenty-three. Does that hit? That does indeed hit. Rolling fucking baller today, bro. That damage. Bro. God I damn it, and then, my, and then my damage is such dog shit, bro. Seven damage. Seven damage? Alright. Alright. Oh right. my god. Uh, so it moves Wait. up to Krokogif. Guys. That what? motherfucker had Mind Sliver on him. He could have rolled a d4 and minus it from his... To be unstunned. Uh... <sighs> Oh uh, wait, I need to, I need to, oh. What's oh. that again? Uh, ba -ba 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 okay, so I rolled a 16, a 23, a 16, a 22, a 15, a 15, a 30, a 15, what? a 24, a 29, a 24, a 16, and a 21. And are these all on Asp? That, no, that's all on Kirk again. Oh, have fun with that. How many attacks was that? I'm gonna slide my HP down to zero again. So how many how many of those hit you? I want I need to know what your AC is actually. Seventeen and up. Seventeen. All right. So that's one. Yeah, because you might get two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven of those hit you. So let me. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna just die again. Uh, you take 112 bludgeoning damage as it anime, uh, Flurry of Punches yeah, you. I'm you just dead. die! I I'm pretty sure you dead. just die! Yeah, I'm not gonna say that. I'm dead. Alright, uh... Double Maybe. one, its purpose complete, is going to also just kind of cross its arms and not do anything. Well, I just realized the guys can't fight this thing. kill the soul now. Oh! Uh, actually... Funny thing. He can't do that with Krukgif. He will oh, die. Shit. He will die if he tries to because Krukgif is a blessed of Sir Sherad. Ah. So he cannot. Hey, he hey, cannot hey, steal hey, her soul. Hey. Oh. hey, 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 hey! Can I do? Can I do one thing? Please, 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 please fucking please. Is it your turn? No, but it, it doesn't need to be my turn to do it. Is it a reaction? Is it a reaction? It, no, reaction? it's just changing one of my spells. Can I do that? No. But we had a longer beforehand. Well, you should have thought of that, that earlier. Right. Yeah. Please. No. Me. Cannot change spells mid combat. It is no, now a double two's turn. Well, um, guess I'll die then. Oh, I just forgot. I didn't add the additional damage to that. Hold up. 
They're, they're dead dude. anyway. You, uh, they're dead uh, anyway. Hey, I need, hey, maybe you take 124. Maybe you should roll that D4 from Mindsleaver that you should have rolled before from him trying to be unstunned. And yeah. if he rolls what? a three or four, he should be stunned this next round. Uh, sure. We don't need extra damage. We need justice. He rolled a four. He is a 12, so he's <laughs> still technically stunned. So he, he just he just uh becomes re-stunned. The Kaidok in the back that is currently forty-five feet away from all of you becomes stunned. That's all I need. Alright, um double number two is still facing Asp. Uh yep. double number two is also going to do the funny thing. I'm dead then. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna uh, accept that. Yeah. Pretty hey, you never know, he could roll seven one. I could. So that is a what is your AC? 17. 17. All right. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of those hit you normally. And then there is a crit in there. I'm oh, dead, man. I'm just dead. I'm just dead. I'm just dead. Uh, so that. Yeah, I'm accepting the, my fate. 112. Stop. He's already dead. I am genuinely already dead. That's 144 bludgeoning damage as he also does it. Uh, with that done, All both of the doubles... Ready, perma dead. <laughs> doubles both cross their arms. All right, uh... Whose turn is it? So, I'm okay. going to remove... All right, I guess little... Asp's soul gets stolen then. Yay! You well, we I'll, we'll actually this? get back to that at the end of the session. Oh, yeah. My turn. That's... We, uh, well, okay, to be fair, there's nothing to get back to if we're all dead, because then it doesn't matter. Yeah. All right, well, my turn. Yeah, Kaidok is stunned. I'm... Okay. Seeking bullets. Okay. Uh, aid, fuck them up. <laughs> All of my attacks are gonna be made with ace, except for my bonus action attack. Okay. Which is gonna be made with my pistol. All right, first attack. Uh, he's stunned, so I have advantage. Wow, that's a that's a two and a three. Uh, what? No, that's a uh, fourteen plus eight, which would be twenty-two. That hits. Twenty-two, perfect. All right, so now that deals double dice for the shot. Are uh, you using the oh, using the special bullets? Secret bullets. Yep. Yes. All right, two d twelve. That's twelve plus five, seventeen. Plus three twenty. Plus one d six. <laughs> twenty two. Is that it? Is, was that? Is that all the damage? Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then so, extra attack. All right. Nineteen. That's a crit. Okay. Superior critical. Yes, oh, sir. Oh, roll me a one d one hundred. One d one hundred coming up. I'm signing my death certificate here. I got a five. Five. Yep. Uh, <laughs> all right. So you feel it is imperative to press the advantage no matter the cost. So basically, you can choose to gain advantage on all attacks against your target until the end of your next turn. But if you do, all enemies have advantage on their attack rolls against you until the end of your next turn. Oh, shit. All right. I'm not doing that ever. Um, all right. So now what would that be? So crit, I'm already dealing double dice. So it'd be 4d12. Uh, you know what? I'm just going to roll this in, in in bots to make it easier. So our 4d12 plus um, 3 plus 2d6. 48 damage. All right. I can't make uh, a reaction because I'm stunned, correct? Correct, I believe. Right. Um, bonus action attack. This is just going to be with my normal pistol. That's a 15, a 7. Wait, that did I expend a charge of legendary resistance to succeed the check? No, you rolled a 16, and that's, that's right. above a 14. Okay. Uh, so 15 plus 23 hits. Or two, uh, 1D. Oh, wait, 2D10. Plus 
three plus one d six. I think it's when they've done the knock them prone thing. I don't have to. He's done. Yeah, um, but it'd be both anyway. True. Well, I mean that'd be useless. All right. Uh, action surge. I'm gonna get this going as fast as I can. That misses. That's a nine plus eight. Yeah, that's seventeen to hit. All right, and last attack. Natural twenty. Two natural twenties. Oh, good lord. Let's go, baby. <laughs> All that's right. What I'm that's, about. that's what I'm talking so, about. Two d twelve plus three plus two d six plus ten plus five. Another forty. That's a lot of damage. Minus forty. Yes. I'm and that glad was, I buffed him. One, two, three. That was three seeking bullets. I am so glad I buffed him. That took my action surge. <laughs> um, D100, that is no. the end of my turn. All right. I did. Oh, so I, I want to add this together. That's the end of my turn, though. Zal. Roll another D100. Oh uh, yeah, you can roll another D100. Okay. Yeah. So. Oh wait. I, oh, I did. Oh. Yeah, you can roll another D100 if you. Nine nine, bam. Ninety nine. Uh, roll shit. an additional set of damage dice. And so, mm. do, is this critted? Is does this? This is this is a. We'll do one d twelve. Is that actually one d twelve? Boo. Yeah. Wow. You will. Wow. You're giving him a permanent injury. Oh, twelve. Be happy. Twelve. It does say roll an additional set of damage dice? Additional set. Nice. Twelve. Okay, yeah, uh, so, permanent injury, you knock one of the skulls on his shoulder off. Cade blows out the smoke of his guns, because he just lit that motherfucker up. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, uh, Zal. So, I'm going to dash action first. Okay. So I can get at the Kaidok. Yeah. Uh, just screaming, Kaida! Okay, as I'm charging at him. Okay. <laughs> I'm then going to swing once. Okay. Okay, that advantage. Yeah. Yeah, 20, baby. Oh, oh. boy. <laughs> Alrighty, then. Are you going to do the execute thing? Oh, yeah, you, you fucking you can. know. Run <laughs> him again. So what, do I, I add a D10? Him. I'm going to add a D10, alright. My damage? Yes. Let's see here. That adds that 2 is... D10. Three times. Oh, 2 D10. Yes, That's right, D10. yeah. You really need to write these things down, Zol. <laughs> I forgot, alright, uh, so that is, uh, um, so that's fucking 31 damage, plus okay. 4, so 35, alright, and then I'm going to Dancing Blade, which they're stunned, 35 so they fail. damage. Yeah, and Dancing Blades, so they auto-fail, right? Because they're stunned? Yep. <sighs> <sighs> and the dab ledge is? Rolling. That is a grand total of 18 from the Dancing Blade. Now All that's right. a lot of dab ledge. And, uh, yeah, that's turn. my turn as I stand right in front of them. Alright, uh, one second, let me... Do a couple things behind the screen real quick. Oh fuck. Uh... All right. Add, sec adds an additional zero to their max HP. Uh, no, I'm not doing that. Well, I mean, you, you've, <laughs> you've crossed the threshold for something. Oh, <laughs> we're They're entering now. stage two. <laughs> uh, all right. So, Tibetan, it is your turn. Uh, I do need draw, to know, I... Tibetan, do you have any auras that allow you to detect anything? But wouldn't it be Asp? Or... Um, no, wait, Asp I is dead. I, 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 I do, but I, but I need to use an action for it. Okay. I drive my... No, I shouldn't. I put my I put my sword into my sheath, and I and I take out Risk Runner. The knife! The 1D! Oh what is God. it? It's a 1D4 knife, correct? Yeah, I don't know what it does, even. It's a 1d4 knife, and anytime there are three or more opponents within five feet of you, you it becomes a plus two knife. Well, fuck it. And it I breaks on a nat a one, I'm pretty sure. It does break okay. on a nat one, unless you're a fighter. Fuck you. 
because it was supposed to. Well, I mean, to be fair, you have advantage. Okay, so are there more than three enemies? Are, are there three enemies uh, against me? No. There's only three enemies on the battlefield, and none of them are next to each other. Um, how far away is my dear, dear friend, Kaidok? Uh, he's 45 feet away. Okay, that's too far. Um, I walk Can't up to... Can't the spear be thrown? Can't the spear be thrown? The flaming oh, spear... Uh, can be thrown, yes. It's flaming, though. It's oh, yeah, true. He's a demon, yeah. It's probably just gonna heal him, actually. Oh, shit. Yeah, you're right. Knowing Aramon. <laughs> <laughs> um, so... I'm, can I throw Risk Runner? Uh, it's a knife. Knight. Daggers yes. do can be thrown. Yes. Uh, would that be better than just Toll of the Dead? I don't know. I don't think so. I, d I don't. Sacred I... Flame. He's fucking stunned! Okay, I move 30 feet. I'm right next to the guy. All right, all right, all right. I Sacred uh, Flame is at. He's 45 feet away. Yeah, I move 30 feet towards him. Uh, you're, Sacred, you're 45 you're feet away. Sacred Flame has a range, does it not? Yeah. Okay, just making 60 sure. 60 feet. Okay. Um, okay, cool. Okay. He instantly fails the dex save because he's... He takes 1d8. He takes 2d8, actually, because I'm... Um... You're upcasting it? He takes 2d8, yeah. Mm. Then fifth level. 2d8. Yes, roll your 2d8. Roll... This is radiant damage, too. Wow. <laughs> wow. Wow. Turns out he's Turns out he's Why just Wait, God. is that a Why spell? Is that a spell? It is a. It is a. It's a cantrip. Uh, you're hit with a counter spell. Oh, you got your because cantrip. Because of course he does. Because of counter spell. spell. <laughs> he heals. Counter spell. Fucking cantrip. Uh, he didn't cast the cantrip. I mean, he didn't. He didn't counter spell. Kaidok doubles did. Kaidok didn't. No, Kaidok can't use magic. He's not counter spelling. Somebody else. The fuck, Aramon? Where? The... Okay, I remember a while back I sent a meme saying, "Hey, would you guys rather have your a DM who heals the enemies mid fight, or would you rather have a DM who counterspells your spells?" And I was like, "Haha, both are terrible, but I would rather this one over that one. This motherfucker put both. Fucking both." I I'm swear, fucking if it's some bullshit ass wizard just appears to say, ha ha, I'm here to help Kaidok, I swear to god. <laughs> From where? Let me see the goddamn Earth's core. Where the fuck is this guy? Uh, the wraith that you saw last session uh, has appeared. Motherfucker! Oh. You know what? You know what? You know what? Hey, Perfect. you crossed the threshold. This wasn't supposed to be an easy boss fight. You. Easy? This has been anything but easy. Two of us are dead! Instantly. <sighs> Instantly? Yeah. He did fuck He did fucking 148 damage! We're level 7! That would one literally one-shot me. Like, e like one-shot one most of us. <laughs> Any of us, actually. Uh, well, that was uh, dogma. <laughs> is that your turn, Tibby? No, it's not, because I'm fucking angry now. Okay. Well, what the fuck right. did you do? You spent your action. Well, who can I see within 10 feet of me? No one. You moved up, correct? Who can I see within 10 feet of me who is an enemy? Uh, you moved away from both of the doubles, which really should have triggered opportunity of attacks, and Kaidok is currently 15 feet away, unless you dashed, which I doubt you did because you used an action, so nobody. Okay, so my bonus action, what should I do for my bonus action? Oh, I know what I should do for my bonus action. Did you fucking cry in a corner? <laughs> I would accept that. <laughs> Fuck you. I don't uh, think that would be a bonus action. I think that's a free action. <laughs> that, that is a free action. You can use your free action to start weeping. I'm not going to. Shut the fuck up. Uh, is that is that your turn? No, it's not. Of course not, because I just said I'm gonna... Yes, it's my fucking turn. Okay, cool. <laughs> um... Tidok's gonna just use a legendary resistance, which is his second legendary resistance of the day. Ah! You, uh... 
just straight up succeed because I'm pretty sure I'm gonna fail this uh, constitution save. So I'll just say I use one and succeed it. Um, all right, so that's the end of my turn. I do still technically have a bonus action. Can I do anything with that? Then it's not the end of your turn, <laughs> technically. You could do something with it. I don't know what though. I'm going to it's my ass with a flame ah. dash at Lucifer. Fuck you. I need um. Yeah, I, I gotta make a deck save. I know. Yeah, make a deck save. Oh man, I've got like. Oh fuck. Okay, I'm making a deck save. Baby, come back. No, that's a net one! Alright, oh, you, you take five. 15 fire damage and are knocked prone. <sighs> man, oh, man. So oh, he man. goes forward. <laughs> he goes forward, he stops right in front of you, Lucifer, and he just and he says, Give me back the sword. Spit on him. Lucifer! Oh, Alright, so uh both uh, of the doubles, their heads turn towards you. Man. Uh, one of the doubles is going to use its movement to run up at you. Going to use its last charge of this. Lucifer? Yeah? Brought this upon yourself? Yeah. Uh, Alright, so, uh, what's your AC currently? AC is 22. All right, so I rolled a 22, a 27, a 28, and a 25, which all hit you. So that is mm -hmm. one, two, three, four of those hit you. So that is minus. minus all right, four. so the name's fixed. Yep. That's 64. Uh, you take 64 bludgeoning damage initially. The other double okay. runs up to you, and it is going to use its last charge of this. On you. Uh, and that is a 30, a 27, a 27, a 27, a 24, a 25, a 21. So one, two, three, four, five, six of those hit you. I'm dead. 16 times Since six. Since you're using fucking average uh, damage. Uh, 96 bludgeoning damage. Oh, I'm not dead. You're still down. I'm still down. I'm not dead. Wait, and it's is, like, that, is that along? Is that like combined with the other damage, or on top of it? On top of it. You take ninety-six. You take sixty-four plus ninety-six. Sixty-four plus ninety-six is one hundred and sixty. Yes, one hundred sixty. <laughs> I am dead. So, like dead, dead, or just knocked out? I'm dead, dead. I'm pretty sure. The um, uh, Kaidok uncrosses his arms and he turns to look at you, Yomir. Says, <clears throat> "I have completed what I came to do. I can end this now, and no more people have to die." I am going to look to uh, Hunter, or I'm going to look. Dude, to I Kate. am too far to hear him. I'm just looking at you, like, no, staring you, at you. Or we'll just say that you can hear him. It's a very resonant chamber. I, I look to- I look to Cade. Cade is showing, like, the most emotion he has ever showed that isn't, like, just happiness. He is, like, decided- What emotion? All, what emotion? He's, like, shocked. Uh... Scared. It's really, he doesn't know what to do. Yelmir is going to look to his, uh, the rest of his party members. He's going to wipe his, his tears from under his hood. And he's going to drop his sword. So, I'm assuming that you both I have, surrender. I, I, I'm surrendering to him. So, can I? Um, can you, what? Roll insight? Can you roll it? Yeah. I want to roll insight to see how much health he has left. How much health he has left? All right. <laughs> if I could finish this with one round, that would be amazing. I have like 13 rats and he's staring right at me. Please don't. Dude, I, I know I, I have to. I'm at, okay. 
I'm at 65 rats. I am not going to be the only one who survives this TPK. What's, 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 no, 19? 19. He has 117 hit points left out of 408. Fuck. <sighs> if he was... We're not His winning doubles this one. have 83 and 62, respectively. Yeah, but if he dies, do his doubles go away because there's, there's no longer a source? And the wraith behind him has 99. I forgot about the wraith! I'm d okay, so... Uh, I'm Gilmer's not dropping my guns. I'm putting them away. I love my guns too much. Gilmer's just gonna, like, nod at Hunter. Or nod at Kate. <laughs> Kaidok actually bows. He felt well. In different circumstances, perhaps this wouldn't have had to happen. He walks over to the dead Lucifer, uh, crosses his arms across his chest like he's done with basically everyone he's killed, and then turns to the altar. Young one, wake up. Look. Uh, so Ager, you actually see him open his eyes, wake up, um, really confused, sits up and then looks at Kaidok, and then Kaidok takes the sword, which starts glowing even though he hasn't sacrificed to it, and he says, I have completed what I came to do. And then he vanishes. Now... Gellar's just gonna, like, fall over, just in defeat. You hear... You feel <laughs> a sorrowful presence, and out of the ether comes the form of Ser Sharad, the Elder God of Death. His scythe clutched in his hands, the lantern hanging, the uh, lantern on a staff floating behind him. He looks down slowly at uh, Kirkagith and he speaks. The price of love is pain when one dies. I will take good care of her, don't worry. He slowly crosses his scythe like um, reaping wheat and a ghost, the ghostly form of Krokogith separates from her body and then start, um, stands beside him. Emotions. Do you have any last words for them? I will allow you to... Krokogith just uh, looks over at everyone. She doesn't really have a face, but her general body language shows contempt. She just says, it's been a good time. Break the bad news to my brother, will you? Goodbye. Gilmer's gonna tighten his hood over his face, just hiding his eyes where he's crying, like, ugly crying. Their charade dissipates, and we close with... Well, you... I'm, you get Agar out of the temple. I am, oddly, uh, I am carrying Lucy and, uh, carry, Asp's well, Oddly body. enough, you seem to forget that Asp's body is there, and this this will come up in a bit. I'm, yeah, I'm just gonna try and, like, carry it's, the back of Krokogith on my back, or carry Krokogith's corpse on my back, and carry in the other arm, uh, Lucy's body in my arm, like, in, in front of me. We fade to black, and then we fade back in. Asp's body lies alone in this large base, and the storm from earlier is now in full effect. A shimmering figure, an amalgamation of eyes and tentacles, some eldritch horror, appears within the, um, appears within the hall, and it touches Asp with one of its many appendages. Nice. Uh, Asp, you have true resurrection cast upon you. Holy shit! Okay, yeah. Asp, Asp rises. Um, you you recognize this being as Duncock. Ugh. I.
a spoon. Join me. Uh, he... For a, for a moment, you see beyond this facade that he puts on, and you see a towering being, thousands of feet tall, with a sword and a bell, who is who is staring down at you. It's it's not visible, but um, Asp smiles under their mask. Because they can see that this being that they've been serving is far more powerful than they ever let on. And they... They approach as much as... Uh, to whatever extent they are allowed to. So... Um... As far as you can tell, it actually begins smiling. Welcome, O oh offspring of terror. And then both Asp and Dunkok vanish. And then we fade out. I know that I do not forgive you. Uh, I, I understand that, and you have all the right in the world, both uh, Tibby and Perkergith and uh, Grim, you all have all the right in the world to be angry at me for what I have just put you through. Aww. In all fairness, I was, mis I was most definitely expecting to die. I just didn't wasn't expecting it to be from a single set of attacks that did over a hundred damage. Well, here's the great thing is this was a great learning experience for me, so I now know I now have more data. Right. Fun fact about this combat, I didn't get a single turn. Oh. Um yeah. no. uh, well, I'm gonna go to the Infernum Manor. You with, end uh, with you know their uh, their son, yeah, both of them, both their sons. Lucifer's and, uh, father comes out to greet you, kind of happily at first, seeing that Agar is um, with you. But then his mood <laughs> grows somber as he sees the still form of Lucifer, and he says, "Putting one life for another, I see." Damn it! Forgive me, sir. I. I tried my best to defend them and to kill that monster. To some extent, it is my fault. Maybe if I'd cared enough to bend there with you, if I'd been a better father in younger years. I will be a few. I was. I'm just gonna like. He's visibly trying not to cry. I'm going to put, like, lay, gently lay down the body of Lucifer. I'm going to put my hand on Egger, Egger's, is his name Egger? Egger, yes. Egger, Egger. Uh, put my hand on Egger's shoulder, and I'm just gonna, just, you know, like, give a somber head nod, and I'm gonna walk away. So. And I'm gonna find wherever the hell Cade went. Cade, where do you think you would have gone? I I don't even know. Like at this point, I'm. There's so many things going through Cade's head, along the lines of this is mostly along the lines of this is why I went my entire life working alone. Uh, he's probably out getting a drink. Yeah, at, so, the, at the bar. Um, I'm gonna go um, to wherever I can find him at most. We go back to, I think it was called the Thunder's Breath. Something like is that. There, and is he drinking Lucifer's favorite in drink? In Third Ring. Quick question, is there a bounty board there? Yeah. Alright. I'm going to walk in. Uh, you see Cade sitting... Mm. At the moment, alone, at the uh, at the he, bar. He actually would, yes, have gotten Lucifer's favorite drink, and be staring at the bounty board. I walk forward to him. <clears throat> yeah, pardon me. You don't mind if I sit down, do you? 
You can sit at a table if you'd like. As he, he kind of looks around. I don't know why I wouldn't allow you to sit down. I'm, I don't have a table for myself. I just sit down with him. Son, I've seen plenty of death in my day, but... That was... I don't know how to describe it. I thought I was stronger. I thought I could do what I was meant to do and defend my home. Defend those I thought I could call friends eventually, but... I'm sorry. Okay, as much just... as I have failed them, I have failed you. Okay, just at, while staring at the uh, the bounty board, he just kind of turns around to you. You know, I don't need your apology. It seems like in this line of work, death is going to be a more common thing than I was hoping. So, let's not get too close. Deal. You can say something that I cannot. You can say you went into a fight and traded blows valiantly. Look at me. Do you see a scratch on me? No, I don't. Hid behind all of you. As he just takes, just downs the rest of his drink, puts it on the table, turns back to the bounty board and starts reading it what bounties are currently there. Uh, they are mostly for wall clearing. That's the armies of terror have been obnoxiously violent towards the uh, city recently, so there's a lot of wall clearing that needs to be done. There are a couple that actually lead to Wakang, Wakang talk uh, detailing uh, wanted persons. Where are you going next? <clears throat> he grabs the bounty off the off the board. You know, I think I think it's time I take a break from the big big fights. Yeah. I don't know. I might go home. I might. Say hi to a few old friends. Do what you feel is right. Or, I could, mm, yeah. But for now, I guess I'll lend my support however I can. As he's just going to take the, 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 the bounty over to the, wherever you take the bounty to accept it. Uh, you would just bring it to the barkeep, Baron. He just puts it down on the table. Which bounty are you, which bounty are you taking? The, uh... Uh, the wanted persons. That's his go-to. Ah, uh, uh, Baron comes up. Ah, taking that one, are you? Well, uh, no it says pay in advance. The man's a heretic wanted by pretty much every church. He uh, goes back, comes back with a bag of 100 gold, puts it down. Pretty big bounty on his head. Well, yeah, I guess it'll, he'll put up a fight. Bit of one. Uh, Cade's gonna kind of, uh, he'll, he'll grab the, the bag of gold. Kind of just put it in his his gold pouch. Uh, he's gonna look at the look up and down the, the bounty itself. He's gonna head back over to the table that uh, uh, Gilmir is at. One sec. Hmm. Well then, 
I I'll need some time to decide if I'm gonna stay in this city or if it's time I moved on. But don't let me tell you what to do. Just let this speak. As he puts the bounty on the table and slides it towards him. Right. And he's gonna reach into his bag and just pull out two gold and put it on the table. I just Here's realized Kate is the only member who still knows about the quest to cleanse the temple. Yeah, but like now he doesn't even know if he wants to do that. I am going to read the bounty. Uh, does it does a name on it? Is there a name on it? Uh yes, it is a bounty for the uh delivery of the dead body of Valador the Heretic to the Church of mm. Asgaroth. It, it clearly says a bounty of like a hundred gold pay in advance, but there's only two gold on the table in front of you. Oh well. I take the two gold. Let's get this son of a bitch. And I'm gonna stand up. <laughs> so, are you two exiting the bar? Yes. Yep. As you exit the bar, uh, Cade, something catches your eye. Written in the dirt, in perfect lettering, is a short message, which reads, You still suck. And it is signed, Lucifer, the King of Hell. What if I just... Okay. If I die, do I go to hell? If that's a yes, what happens if I just... Never mind. Um, <laughs> kill yourself. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You can um, kill yourself now. <laughs> hey, at oh, least, okay. at least he's uh. Fuck, dude. He's like even more than a noble now. That's fucking spoiled brat. Is he just <laughs> hear Cade whisper that under his breath? <laughs> under it is it says fuck you. <laughs> Uh, a new message appears in the dirt. Fuck you. <laughs> you just a, a slight, uh, a slight smile grows across his face, and you just hear one of those like he breathes out his nose and keeps on keeping on. Yep, I'm going to lead the way out of the city. To hopefully like an airship dock so we can get to what is the new place? Okay, talk. Okay, cool. We're going there. So, the fastest way, actually, I need to know. Uh, do all of you have backup characters physically ready? Because we could technically yeah, go I into I the do. next session plan. Uh, I do. Kirk, I guess. I you don't need to worry about yours. See? Well, I don't know after this last session, man. <laughs> all of us have our, pretty much all of us have our characters backup ready. I don't Actually, need Theo right now. Like, I need to talk to you about my backup character. I don't character. have a backup ready, but I doubt I'll need it. You know? <laughs> Just be in purple. Shut up, I'm trying to listen, <laughs> listen to Marillo. <laughs> okay. I have backup ready at level 4. I could just try to upscale it real quick. Uh, yeah. yeah I'll, cause hey, hey, we're gonna hey. run straight into my plans for next session, cause we have time. If that's all right with you. It's yeah, I mean we did start. Minutes. Yeah. So the boss fight took less time than I think you expected. Ah, uh, probably. Oh. So you, the last two surviving members of this party, which are Cade and Gilmir, uh, we fade to black, and then we open again uh, with them to riding in a cart in a trading caravan on the high road to Wakang Talk. So the high road is a highway hidden between the myriad of defenses separating it from the northern wastes, uh, defended by the northern border of Dulodia. Uh, so Wait a second, I'm just realizing we just totally left before the funeral. Actually, we could say that you stayed for the funeral. Okay. And then... <laughs> yeah, that's nice. <laughs> he, he was given a full military funeral with all the honors. The general Primaris of New Lodia was there. I have a theme idea for it. I'll probably just put the theme at the end, because uh, yes, it does have a theme. Uh, so, after that, you were also paid both uh, 500 gold for the furthering of your journey by Lucifer's father with uh, what is... So 2,000 on top of also, the 500 hey, um, each. Yeah. Yes. 
Uh, Grimm's character and Belt are absolutely like they're they are they travel together. All right. Yep. So, uh, you've been riding in this caravan for about a week now. It's full of mostly tabaxi. They make the best. They make the best shipping agents. Uh, as you move further westwards, you see the landscape begin to get more wet. Uh, the temperate seasonal forests giving way to a humid subtropical swampland. And your first stop is a rather well-sized border trading outpost called Take. Um, so the carbon slows as it nears Take. This is about as, a, as the this is about as far as the tabacs you're gonna go. They'll return back to the stronghold where their airship is docked in a few days. But Take is a small town with a pop well small decent I don't know. Population. It's, it is a population between uh like between one and five thousand. Its construction is much different from the heavy-cut stone and wood-beam architecture of New Lodia. Hake's walls are fashioned out of a dense, water-resistant wood. The bark has been stripped from all sides, but the side facing outwards. The buildings themselves are elevated are elevated off the ground with legs, and are built out of you know similar dense wood and bamboo-like plants. As you enter Hake and exit the wagon caravan, you you can immediately really, immediately see the cultural differences. People here are much more lightly dressed for the humid climate for the humid climate and long light spears appear to be the weapon of choice. Horses are not used, but you do see many stocky hairless creatures, not unlike rhinos, but with a wide flat bony plate instead of a horn, which the locals call leer, and they're used to pull marsh uh, wagons and boats across marshes and wetland. As you I'm assuming you go towards the center of town. Mm. You see some Locals preparing what appear to be small, armored, four-legged starfish, grilling them over open fires in some sort of communal cooking area, and you actually do see a massive crab being used to transport foodstuffs. So you now stand in the center of town, in a cobblestone square, and which is surrounded by businesses, and directly across the square from you is the town hall. Uh, standing in the middle of the square, looking rather disgruntled and staring up at a statue, which is in the center, are Owen and Grimm's new characters. Could you two please describe your character? Um, um Grimm, you go first. Yeah, all right. Uh, I'll also send a picture, because, you know, why not? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, uh... I'll just, I, haven't just... Done their, I haven't done their appearance yet, fuck. That sounds, that sounds I'll, like I'll, a you problem. Yeah, so better figure it out, buddy. Yeah, so Ooh. the char- so my character, they are they're pretty tall to be honest. They're a, like a seven foot five char- person, but they're also like while they're wearing clothes and where the clothes are, everything looks humanoid shape. Anything that seeps out seems to have like black smoke coming off of it and their skin certainly is also a darker shade if you were to see their face you wouldn't have a discernible mouth to look at it it's very much as if they also aren't like entirely there like if you tried hard enough you might accidentally go through them my turn yes yep. okay so um standing next to him you see this about three-ish foot tall uh what looks like a like a standing bat of some kind uh he's wearing a long like a long robe with many belts and different like bits and bobs and, and like pouches adorning it it has the sleeves cut at the elbow to allow for a set of wings that run along his forearm to flourish out. Uh, he has an unusually wide head, like like nearly football shaped, and very tall ears. I assume we're looking at the statue so they can't see my face. Uh, yes. If you could see his face, he's got his face is proportionally wide, but his eyes are not. They are comically small comparatively to the rest of his head. Love blood, bloody. <laughs> uh, also, he has this this like satchel uh, around his shoulder with a with like this this very I suppose novel design of uh, 
of like a potion bottle smiling that he's wearing on his back that he's that he has hovering over his back uh, around the back of his left hip. All right. Mm. <clears throat> okay. So, uh, Hunter and Gilmer, you see these two. Would you like, would you like, would you like to approach them? Uh, yeah. Uh, you do the talking, because I'm lost here, because honestly, Cade wouldn't approach him. <laughs> this is all you, buddy. Yeah. Um, uh, I'm just going to walk up next to them. Uh, what, what statue are they looking at? Uh, so, they're looking at a statue of a man with a heavy cloak on, with a bamboo whistle hung about his neck and a staff that appears to be made of living wood in his left hand. His right hand is raised in a gesture of guidance. You, uh, you could make me a history check if you'd like to figure out sure. what this is. No, I, uh, three. <laughs> Three? Uh, you have no idea who this is. I uh, I, I look to the two uh, interesting, to say at least, individuals. So, uh... you have any idea what this thing is? Uh, what? And... Do, do we know? The, uh... And Belt turns around. <laughs> I, I doubt Belt knows in particular. <laughs> Belt does not know. Grim, you remember this from your previous life to an extent. Um, this is Jerem, the Lord of the Mists. Who is yeah. a minor god. This is his domain. Yeah. Taran sort of turns around, looks down at Gilnir. He's like, that is... You said Jerem? Jerem. Jer that is Jerem. Uh, some... Minor deity, Lord of the Mists, I believe it is. Ah, uh, gotcha. You two work together? Wait. I think so. Hey, weird question. You got any mustard seed? Uh, no, I don't. You got any cinnamon sticks? No. Alright, well, that was worth a shot. And he what? just turns back around and looks at the statue. <laughs> anyway, um, me and my uh, compatriot, I gesture to Cade behind me, I assume. It turns back around when you say compatriot, just like looking back at Cade. Yeah, we uh, were in need of some new you know, individuals to join us. So if you're looking for work uh, around, you know, 500 up front, uh, gold. Uh, yeah, I uh, look. I, I look down to Bilt and like. I look up to. to... Yeah, I say. I say. Would that buy your cinnamon sticks? Oh, buy plenty. Of, say, probably buy must. Act. It'd pro actually probably buy a mustard seed. Yeah, I'd love to do that. I don't think a mustard seed costs five hundred. All right. The seed itself is expensive. Oh. Hmm. Well, because right. you know, we use the seed to both grow the plant. Mm, and correct. use it in cooking. Either way, an apple would also suffice, actually, now that I think about it. Maybe. Mm. And it, that'd require a bit more preparation. I By the way, on his belt, you see, like, you see two books. <laughs> one written... The one has is labeled in common as... I think I... Hold on, let me see what I actually said it said. Good, Good wording. Good wording. Yes. Um, so the one, so there's one farther at the front that says magic elixirs in common. Question, can you read Sylvan? Can Old Game Miller read Sylvan? No, I cannot. <laughs> so there's one that's written in a, a foreign language that, the characters look vaguely elvish. <laughs> hmm. Uh, I, uh, I turned to Cade. I, uh, I think I made a mistake. <laughs> oh, no, uh, I wasn't gonna say anything until you realized it. Oh. <laughs> All right, come along, you two. I'm gonna walk to like the nearest tavern and get a drink. All right, cool. Uh, okay. Typically means fighting. 
fighting typically means pulling, pe punching people's eyes out. That could be fun. <laughs> I agree. Oh, all right, I'm all right. Uh, no, I had my yeah. face plant. I like, I just like slapped my face. Cade's already <laughs> walking to the tavern. He's put a cigarette in his mouth. You yeah, I'm fine. Yeah. So, you enter this this tavern. It's it's also elevated off the ground. It's fairly busy. I would like it if Gorilla was here right now, but I don't believe it is. So, yeah, I'm just muted. Okay, uh, did you I read did. the thing I sent you? Uh, the... Yes, absolutely. Okay, cool. Uh, so, you enter it. I'm assuming you go to try and get drinks. Uh, but then someone gets thrown through a window. From I'm gonna go check outside. that out and make sure they're okay. Oh no. <laughs> I'm gonna go check that out and make sure, it's a, make sure whoever got thrown out of the window is okay. And I just start walking out. Oh, yeah, I'm just walking out. I just like walk over. The it's like, how old does he look? It <laughs> is a uh, middle-aged man, maybe 40, 50 years old. I just like stared down. It's like, you okay? Uh, I'll be fine. Eventually. You sure I can? You sure? I can yeah. kill you if you want. Right. He, he looks at you, like, appalled at what you just said. Yeah. What? Yeah, what? Alright, yeah. Uh, so would, would you like to look outside? Yeah, I look outside. Uh, so outside is, uh, Marvillo is your character, currently having a, I guess, a ball, because you just yeeted someone through a window. Okay, so do I describe her? Ah, uh, yes, please. Okay, so... What you see upon you is a person named Luna. She uh, wears some very strange clothes that seem almost tribal. Like, it, by medieval standards, it doesn't look like modern clothing. It's like weird robes and... Almost like desert protection gear. I just got a... what's it called? I forget the name, but that thing that protects your neck. That thing, you know the thing. Oh yeah. A, cow mm -hmm. a, a cowl? A Probably, yeah, I don't know, Scarf? honestly. A, a, ba a uh, bandana? You can imagine it, however you like. Um, but one very distinct feature is that her eyes and hair are both just pure white. Like, her eyes just... Barely have a tiny bit of a discernment of where her iris begins and her pupils end, but it's mostly just fully white. And strapped across her back is a big old staff with a faintly glowing stone that kind of resembles the format of a crescent moon on it. Okay. And I'm sorry, did you just throw someone out a window, I believe? Did, did the person get thrown into the tavern or out of a different building? Uh, she was- the person was thrown into the tavern from outside. I just look outside and it's like... What- uh, are you sure you're okay? Yeah. Alright. Oh boy. So... What now? <laughs> um... They you... seem... I just like look back to... Uh, I fucking look back to Taranj like... They seem hostile. <laughs> they seem strong. Anyway. Good. Okay, so would you like... Would you like to go look at this? To... Oh, you go ahead. Yep. Uh, Grim, can you repeat that? Uh, Teron was just commenting <laughs> on the fact that they've seen better throws. <laughs> uh, Hunter, would you like to would you like to look outside at this person? Sure. Uh, you make me history. Oh no! Oh no! Uh -oh. Wait, what? 
Uh oh, stinky. Uh -oh. Wait, okay. That's by to this to remember person. something, right? This person, out. do you mean? The, the woman in desert gear who just yeeted another man through the window. So Marilla's character. Yes. Oh no, I was kind of hoping to fail this. But... That's a solid 19. Uh, they're <laughs> wearing clothes that are native to Rano. Jessica? No, it's not Jessica. Wait, hold on. What race are you? What race are you? Oh, no. What? <laughs> nah, like that's like, more What? Race are you? Great. You better not say Brazilian. <laughs> uh, she is a uh, human. Quirked up Brazilian human? cowboy? Human. Yeah. Uh, I'm, yeah, he's, he's fine. <laughs> well, I'm sure he's seen people from Rano. It's like... No, no, not the city, the country. Yeah. It's a desert native. Yeah. Yeah. It is stupid easy. Um. Would, you, would, you, would anyone like to approach the uh, woman who Bilt has determined as hostile? I'm just gonna like look at the window like, Hey, what? Why'd you throw that guy through the window? Oh. That old bloke. Yeah. yeah. The, this one on the floor right now. She doesn't like go up to the window, just rest her elbows on it. Oh, that old far just tried to swing on me out of one gold. Yeah, uh, Tehran does approach and say, Also, if you um, arch your back a bit more to the right, they'll go a bit further. <laughs> and you, okay, just please don't. I, I'll, I'll handle this. And I'll. Well, I mean, that's good advice, though. <laughs> I'm gonna walk forward to the, the uh, Luna. Is that the name, right? Yes. All right. I'm gonna walk forward to them. Uh, hi. Um, make a long story short, going on a bit of a you know quest, I guess, journeying around the world. Uh, I don't know exactly what we're doing. Hey, Cade, what are we doing again? <laughs> yeah, he he would have told you what the mission was he on forgot. the trip. He the, mis the mission is to cleanse the Temple of Sorrows, retake oh, it, eventually. Oh, yeah. Retake. As soon as you yell at him saying, hey, what's the mission? Cade just looks at you and he's like, I think she's a little too young for you. Uh, uh, wow. We're taking was... the Temple of Sorrows back. Young for what? I, I don't I know. Really... Alright. I really... Hold on. A moment, and I'm gonna walk forward to Cade. Mm -hmm. How can I help? I'm gonna punch him right in the nose and I'm gonna walk off. <laughs> <laughs> Just <laughs> sorry about that. Anyway, I just like to look back at Cade. Cade roll D4, D4 old man punch damage. Uh, yeah, roll me a D4. <laughs> old man damage. Let's Pure go. damage. <laughs> you take two old man damage. I just want to look back at Cade like, are you okay? Are you hurt? Cade looks f as fit as a fiddle because just to spite you, I am using second wind. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. Wow. Cade looks as, as, as fresh as ever. Yeah, you do get- oh, fact, Just assuming cool. that you guys know that you did get a long- multiple long rest, so. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and anyway, I'm gonna walk back over, uh, we're retaking the Temple of Sorrows, I just remembered. Uh, can I join? Punching my friend reminded me that I would, that's what we're doing. <laughs> that one punch rattled his hollow bones enough so he could remember. Fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I yeah, a... actually, Aramon, didn't they level up? Yes, actually. Oh. It is oh. level 8 now. All for- Yeah! <laughs> uh, oh. hey, hey. I am barely keeping together upscaling this level 7, Jesus Christ. It's fine, you, there probably will be no more combat. Anyway, we're, uh, taking the Temple of Sorrows back from some other god. Uh, pay 500 up front, care to join us? Oh, it's always a temple, isn't it? Fucking Zelda, oh, it's telling you. What? How is it always- wait, what? Hold on, I don't think I follow here. 
it's Wait, as soon as you say fucking zealots, can't you just see Cade lean over? Wait, do you do you like not care for religion too? Well, not only not care, care for I religion, will be despised. Cade, <laughs> you know, you're welcome along in this party. As he just goes back to whatever he was doing before. Wait, how much the front pair join us? It's... How, how much did sales pay? Huh? Two hundred. What did you say, Hunter? Two hundred. Take it or leave it. No, it's five hundred. Fucking greedy piece of shit. Eh. You know, I'm kind of new here. How? How much things I can trade with? This gold, you say? Five hundred gold is a lot. Oh, it is a lot. Mm. Well, I, I want. I really... <laughs> say it. I, ju I just kind of built. Just looks back at Cage like, "Hey, if it's like if if this changes anything, the churches don't like me either." Uh, it doesn't change anything. All right, cool. <laughs> well, there's a lot of there's a lot of pay, and you guys are only a church. Eh, I'll go. I don't have anything better to do. Can I ask you hop through the window. <laughs> <laughs> uh, welcome aboard, and I walk back to the party. <laughs> now I can go through the door. <laughs> I, I walked to the tavern. I want my drinks now. <laughs> but, but one second, just rewriting my art. Just rewriting my now, art goals really quick. Now imagine if that's just like the old man talking. Oh, like he, way, he's just fourth way, wall breaking the entire way. Look in general. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. saw that. Yeah. Uh, what is what is that? What is I'm scared. That? <laughs> <laughs> 23 passive? Oh, 25, 25 awesome, dude. passive. <laughs> Hell yeah. Man will not be able to not see anything. <laughs> he will see. I can smell really your heartbeat. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, there is a fortune teller outside offering to read people's fortunes for free. Cade wants to know when he's gonna die. <laughs> Cade's gonna go over. Yesterday. Yesterday? Fuck. So. Hold you? on, guys. I'll be right back. How long has it been, actually? What was the time skip? How long? Uh, it's been a cup. It's been about a week. Oh. Oh shit. A week okay. ago. Okay. Um. About a week ago. So. So I have I. I could waste a fourth level slot on Arcane Eye just to see how much bullshit this fortune teller's pulling. Alright. <laughs> I'm going to do that. Before I walk up, I'd like to cast Arcane Eye in the back of their little booth thing, or behind them. Uh, no, they're just on the street. Point. Okay, so there's no. There, there really can't be any fancy parlor tricks. Okay, no. Mind. No, she. This is a very old woman. She's got a staff with a bunch of, like, bones and small tribal symbols hanging from it. She's clad in a, I'm sorry. In a shawl. Wait, actually, this is perfect. The material component for, for Arcane Eye is a bit of bat fur. <laughs> oh my I God. don't you require start. material components. I feel like they limit have, the game too I much. I have an Arcane Focus anyway. I just think it's funny. All just right. Just cough with a fur ball and guess what? Like, no, genuinely, I just, like... I, I actually just like cut off a bit of fur from my arm. I mean, my character has a pair of like barber shears. Mm -hmm. He is he is a licensed barber where he comes from. Uh, I like the so would you would you like to cast arcane eye? No, I mean if there's no like if there's no booth or, or table or any like if there's nothing to really if there's nothing to really hide any parlor tricks, uh, I'll just do it. Hey, I'll just do it. Okay, uh, how does arcane eye function? No, I'm not casting Arcane Eye. Okay. Okay. Uh, I yes. I I do have to go. Oh. Oh, oh no. All oh, right. Yeah. Well, uh, can we do this really quickly? Uh, you could just say that my character is in the bar drinking. Okay. All right. 
we'll, we'll Are you going for the rest of the night? Finish up. I am going for the rest of the night, yes. Probably finish okay. up after this, then. Alright. Alright, um, sorry about that. See you guys. Uh, all of, all of you, yeah. See around all of you but Gilmir. Gilmir stays in. Uh, would you, would you all like to go get your fortunes read? Sure. Yeah, sure. So this old lady, uh, kind of looks around at all of you, uh, and points at Cade. Would you like to know? Cade points back. <laughs> oh well. Do you like? Would you like to know your future? He just kind of stops and thinks for a second. You said this was free. Absolutely free. You know, might as well. I cannot pay the spirits, so, uh, I don't see any reason to charge for it. So she kind of grabs your hand with all the force, the uh, unresistible force that only an old lady can summon. Yes, obviously. Uh, and obviously. looks at it. Mm. You are hopeless. But, you will see her again, and things might be a bit different than last time. Keep that in mind. Cade's face goes from the usual, like, stone-cold look that he had. Not stone-cold, but, like, kind of emotionless face that he usually has immediately to an oh-shit face. <laughs> By the way, all this time, like, all this time that you've been holding this super stone-cold, like, emotionless face, um, he doesn't have pupils, but Bilt has been eyeing you. <laughs> Alright. You know, we've all And the moment you show, the, the moment you show emotion, he just kind of shakes his head and stops looking at you. So, uh, she points to Luna next. Would you like to know your future? Oh. Or at least a small oh, piece yeah. of advice pertaining to it. Eh, yeah, sure, why not? Uh, she grabs your hand as well. You are faithless. Do not completely yeah, no lose faith. It mm -hmm. could be bad for you. Ah, uh, you. He points at Bilt. Here's the thing, Bilt doesn't have normal paw, like a normal hand or paw. He has those weird fucking bat claws on the end of his hands. He doesn't care. I'm aware. I just, I just like, yeah, sure. She grabs your hand. Mm. A great plague is coming. One that you may be instrumental in stopping. Keep mind of this. I will, thank you. Uh, uh, Void Wraith. Come hither. Yes? Uh, I was a little on the nose. Hmm. Yeah, I, I thought that too. They, uh, approach. Uh, she actually manages to grab your hand. Hmm. I mean, she has such deep connection with the spirits, I'm not necessarily I'm not surprised. not surprised either, no. Hmm. This... One is a bit complicated. You are a shattered creature. You are not what you are supposed to be. Nor are you what you will be. There will come a time which you must make a decision between the completeness of yourself or the life of others. This is this is literally that episode of Avatar where Aang chose pussy over complete control of the Avatar For state. Real. <laughs> <laughs> With enough I'm time, just saying. You, you could potentially get both, but I don't know. Probably one or the other. Usually is. Right. Okay. Oh, also, um, bull bat creature. Yeah, what's up? Pay attention to the Lord of the Mists, please. I, I, listen, I, you, I, I'm not from around here. I don't know shit about what happens down here. She points at the statue of the... Yeah, I'm aware, <laughs> that's, I'm aware. I, I'm aware that's who it is, I just... Pay attention. 
All right, I will now go. Goodbye. I mean, I would say my eyes are open, but they kind of always are, so. She, she, uh, shuffles away. <laughs> I imagine she just, like, gets around, like, like, in a crab position and shuffles away <laughs> sideways. Wait, wait, she turns back around. <laughs> Tell your old friend inside that his journey is not over yet. All right, cool. All right, goodbye. Yeah. Turns around. Wait. I, I am I just, crab. <laughs> Scuttles I just, away. I just, I just looked at Kate just, like... I she whistles, I and out of an alley comes a lance crab. <laughs> which is a massive crab with a claw on one arm that resembles a large shield, and the other claw has a large spike on it. She climbs onto the lance crab and then rides it down the street. Oh my I, I'm just gonna, like, look at Kate, just like... Uh, I don't think I ever actually introduced myself. Uh, hi. My name is Built Dick Foretelling. You can call me Built. Yes, and I am Tehran. <laughs> that probably raises red flags. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so anyone that is half knowledgeable about anything knows that Tehran is actually the name of the Elder God of Peace. Cade wouldn't know. He doesn't care about the gods. All he knows is to be shocked at what just happened. <laughs> you guys oh, still see a, a, a hint of um, emotion. That's that's all I can say in his face but, after but being he still told that. But I'm, I assume he still returned to a very, like, very quickly to a mostly stone-cold attitude. You know? Yeah, his breathing's off a bit, but uh, his facial is, like, back to normal. Uh, uh yeah. Uh, Bill just kind of looks at you and is just like, he just like starts rummaging through his, 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 uh, satchel. Just like, what am I having here? Uh, Cage kind of comes back too. He just, he pulls out like, oh, hi. You, you seem very like unusually calm, except for that one, one shock, that one big shock. Um. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And doing it, that and, thing, right? And and he just, um, um. Okay, I'm I'm gonna say that Bilt doesn't carry around. He carries around dried meats with him, probably. And he just pulls out this like, this like piece of like pork uh, pork jerky, and just like here, eat this. Oh, wait. Uh, what's this? this? I, your humors are imbalanced. Just trust me. Uh, can I roll insight on this? <laughs> I'm mean, not malicious. Maybe. I'm not malicious. Medicine. Medicine. I mean, what would? What? What are you trying to identify, though? I just want to know what it is. <laughs> A bat? Okay, I, I, let me set the scene. A bat that I just met today that was traveling with the Wraith had reached into his bag after being, seeing someone he knows or just met become shocked at a fortune and give him jerky. Or simply pork jerky. Uh, and it also seems to be not super salty pork jerky. It seems like there was a lot of time spent curing this meat. Like, this was very intentionally made. It wasn't just like, oh, hey, there's dried meat on the road. I am rolling investigation. <laughs> okay, I don't know what you're rolling investigation for. <laughs> I, you are getting a very blank stare from Tehran that you investigating this stuff. <laughs> Man, I really for, wish Z was here. Context, I would start yeah. giving him shit for inviting these people into the party. For context, Tehran has definitely gotten the here, eat this, and he pulled and he's handed a piece of jerky. Absolutely, because you cannot. Uh, make Taram bleed to balance his humors because he has no... He, well, it's not even that. His, because having too much blood implies that he's overly happy. No, Taram is just calm all the time. That is too much color, yellow bile. Alright? So he needs something salty? Or no, sorry. He needs, well, he needs something juicy, uh, tender, mostly flavorless. So stuff like cucumbers, lettuce, fish, pork, uh... Unfortunately, I can't really store pork adequately, so... I'm sorry, are you actually an IRL plague doctor or something? 
No, I did a lot of research on this, though. I've done a ton of research. Uh, yeah. uh, don't put it past uh, me, I won't become a plague doctor. What's your investigation? 16. <laughs> what are you trying to find? <laughs> just anything! If All right. the, just find out if this isn't jerky uh, or so something. So basically, anything. what Bill has done is he is acting as a medical professional would, and he is giving you what he believes is the most uh, adequate treatment. Cade slips it into his pocket. I don't know, you got like, you know what, I'm not even gonna. It's, you know, it's, Thank uh, you. it's, Thank you. it's, uh, it's, I'm trying to think of words to use. It's cold in the second degree and, and moist in the first degree. Cade just kind of nods his head. <laughs> Good to know. Or, actually, no, sorry, it's dry in the first degree. It's not ideal for what for what the treatment would be, but that's what I have on hand. Mm -hmm. Speaking of which, and he just walks back, and, uh, Bill just walks back into the tavern, and just, like, like, walks up to the bar, just like, hey, do you have mustard seed? Uh, why? You need mustard I'd, seed. I just need mustard seed, man. You need mustard gas. Huh. Uh, the bartender a is a rather confused used looking tabaxi who's just like eh, why i use it for cooking <laughs> i need some for the road but... uh, if you want mustard seed you probably should not go into a bar you should probably go to a general store fair enough okay great. have a good day and he just walks out <laughs> good goodbye <laughs> he did say have a good day he just walks out yeah, Tehran just kind of waves to you, and they know you'll be back. <laughs> yeah, here's the thing. Bill very much does not get the culture of the, of the South. <laughs> He's very much used to this just culture of, of just asking people anything, because, well, maybe someone has an answer for you. <laughs> you know? Fair enough. He's not used to questioning, like, hey, is asking that person this question a good idea? So, um... By the way, Aramon, he's going to pack. He's going to purchase two bags of mustard. Two. Uh, he's going to pack. Purchase one pound of mustard seed. All right. Uh, that will be. It's a lot of mustard seed, but it's very useful for what he's using it for. How much is it? Five gold. Five gold. Okay. Uh, so that would be. So I have four ninety-five now. Yes. Okay, cool. <clears throat> okay, um... If, if... And, like, as he walks back out, he's just, like... He's, like, he takes the bag of mustard seeds, and instead of putting the bag of mustard seeds in his bag of holding, he just kind of pours the individual seeds into his bag of holding. Or, more accurately, it just looks like a, a decorated satchel, and he pours an entire bag of mustard seeds into it. So, uh, what? You sound distressed. Nothing. nothing. Uh, and he yeah. then then Bill reaches into the bag, pulls out like a small hint, like five or six mustard seeds, and eats them raw. Okay, if this. What the mm. fuck? Well, mustard I know seeds are, means mustard seeds are hot and hot and dry in the fourth degree. Good to know. Uh, they are, good was... for balancing, they are good for balancing out phlegm. Hmm. Uh, so, um... I never really got the, uh, who exactly you people are. We're just adventurers. That's that, the that easiest way to put it. tells me absolutely nothing about you. Just, just, uh... There are plenty of it. <laughs> there are a lot of adventurers. Yeah, yeah. Like, especially since this is like a trading, like, this is like a trading border town. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people who would otherwise, you would know them as adventurers or ascendants, come through here a lot. Uh, I, I hate to break it to you, but there are a lot of adventurers here. Uh, that really doesn't help. I'm aware. Cade goes into the bar and gets a drink. Alright. 
Okay, from my ridiculous passive perception, what can I pick up from that guy? <laughs> uh, Cade? Yeah. Alright, so... Cade, be complex. Yes, Most of the time, tough as nails. Does have a couple soft spots, particularly for a certain individual. But that's about it. Okay. We can tell that he has feelings, just not a lot of them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's seen shit. Okay. He just seems overly, you know, like, calm about everything. Except for the one big emotion he had. That, that just tells me that he's got too much color, you know? <laughs> ah! Okay. <laughs> you don't what? like the amount of work I put into this? <laughs> it's uh, admirable. Lu <laughs> Luna? Mm -hmm. Uh, yes, Mr. Tarani. And she just kind yeah. of raises her chin at him. You, you just sort of get a really slight head tilt when you're emphasizing their name and it goes, they put their head back. It's like, so, what is it that, who are you exactly? My name's Luna. Why well, I'm not. Well, you carry a stick. What does the stick do? You know, actually, we should probably, after you guys finish, we should probably stop. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, Luna will pick up the staff and just kind of do some overly exaggerated hand movements. And uh, I'll cast Dancing Lights as small little celestial bodies just surround her and shine a bright light. Like, magic. Right. All back to the crazy Zwell the Goth Mage who said, MAGIC! He's gone! He's dead. No, he's not dead, he went back to the Zwell the Goth War Kingdom to visit his mother, who you insulted. He sure, he went to a nice farm. All right. Uh, I th I think that's yeah. yeah yeah. I think that's where we should leave probably it, uh... where we're gonna end it. Um, that was eventful. Indeed. Yeah. Just a little bit. Thank you all for playing. I'll see you all. I got to flex the knowledge that I spent like a week stuffing my mind with instead of studying for exams. Wow. <laughs> see you all probably on Sunday. I have some grinding. Yeah. To see do. you all probably on Sunday. Hey, it's me. It's your DM and host, Eramon. Uh, I just wanted to pop on for a bit to thank the five people that listen to this. Yes, the five people. Uh, to, well, to thank you. This marks the end of Arc 1 of Temple of Sorrows, that being Lucifer, uh, Lucifer's Ark. I believe the complete name was Lucifer, Warrior of Vegas. And this arc ended with the rather, rather tragic death of three of our heroes at the hands of Kaidok. Now, I do know a lot of people have died, or a lot of characters have been cycled through in this first arc alone, but hopefully we can kind of move past that, and as the series continues, I can become a better DM and figure out how to more accurately and more, well, better balance things so that it is a struggle but it is still possible with that um thank you for listening and i hope you will listen to this theme which is attached at the end of the episode which is the theme of lucifer once again thank you for listening and we'll see you all next week <laughs>